I have this 85 300 turbo diesel wagon in the shop and I'm chasing a problem with the engine. And this is a pretty common problem, so I decided to bring out the camera and film this. We'll go through the process of trying to find out what the problem is and then how to fix it. I know this is a common problem because I've received a number of emails from people that say, hey, I've got this problem, can you help me? Well, here's the problem. When the engine is cold, when this five-cylinder turbo diesel engine has sat overnight without running, and you get in the car to start it, it will start up and quit. And you do it again, it will start up and quit. Even when you race the engine a little bit, it'll do it two or three times until finally when it warms up a little bit, it'll idle out and run fine. And when you start it hot, it's no problem. It's always when it sits overnight that you have this problem. Now I'm gonna get in the car now and I'm gonna start this up a couple times and let you hear what's going on with this engine. Now, some of you will say, well, I've had that problem with my car. It's no big deal. You know, it just once it warms up, it's fine. But it is a little irritating because you got to kind of hold the throttle and, and it shakes and vibrates. And I'm going to start out by telling you what is probably not because I've already done a few things to the engine. Some of you may say, well, it's gummed up fuel injectors. Well, I took out an injector and bench tested. I also ran a diesel purge through the engine, which... You know, should eliminate the possibility of gum that injection pump or So I'm going to rule that out. Some of you might say, well, the idle set too low. Well, not necessarily because it idles fine when it's hot, and if you race it up a little bit, it won't quit. So I do not believe it has anything to do with the idle. There's a rack damper adjustment bolt, maybe, but that's really not the reason that rack damper bolt is there. And you'd say, well, what if it's just a worn out engine? Well, I've done a compression test. It's got brand new glow plugs in it, so it's not glow plugs. So if you kind of think through what's going on here, it's most likely a fuel problem, all right? There's no distributor, so it's not electrical. So I think we've got a problem with it losing pressure or losing fuel at the injectors overnight. You let it sit and the pressure drains off at the fuel injectors through these hard lines back through the pump and then the injection pump has got to work now one thing i did that gave me a little clue that i'm on the right track is the other morning i got in there and i pumped up the primer pump before i got in the car to start it and it started up now it didn't run perfectly but it didn't quit so we're going to look at a fuel flow problem or a fuel delivery problem here and right off the bat, I'll tell you now what I'm going to do first. There's a, n a number of things I could do, but there are some check valves in the fuel system here that keep the fuel pressure up when the car sits. And the lift pump has two check valves in it. That's the little mechanical pump down below your hand primer pump that pumps fuel from the tank and delivers it into the injection pump. Now, there could be a problem inside the injection pump, but I found that's kind of rare. So what I'm going to do, just to eliminate the problem, and since most of these lift pumps need overhauling anyway, we're going to remove the pump and put in an overhaul kit first. Pulling the lift pump off these diesel engines is kind of messy. And I go through some tips on how to do this and minimize the fuel and oil spills when you remove it. So we've gone through the process of disconnecting everything. Now we're ready to pull it out of there. And I'm covering all this in my video that comes with the kit, so I won't go into detail here. But we're gonna get the whole pump off. And we'll be able to get it up on the bench. Okay, see? You can see how oily and messy it is. So We'll finish unhooking these lines and get it cleaned up a little bit, and then we'll start the disassembly process to install the new check valves.
I saw something when I got this over on the bench and I just had to go grab the camera again because this is one of my biggest pet peeves of all time. And that's this stuff right here. I call it the worms of disgust. If you watch some of my other videos, you know how I totally dislike RTV silicone gasket maker. And this is what happens when it gets exposed to petroleum, whether it be gasoline or oil, it just comes apart. It just doesn't work. Come on, folks, stop using this stuff. And I wish they wouldn't promote it as the ideal gasket maker because it's not. This requires a paper gasket right here. Obviously, the mechanic that did this didn't have a paper gasket. So he used this bad stuff here, okay? Okay, I'm gonna get off my high horse. The other thing you wanna do is check to make sure the bearing is good. Spin it, make sure it's not loose. If this bearing is sloppy, you won't get full travel or full fuel flow. And then you can turn it upside down and see if it pumps. I'm gonna push on this up and down on the bench. Yeah. But it's not pumping very much fuel. If you look up here, you can see it's not, it doesn't have a real solid sound to it. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. This looks like a good candidate to overhaul. Yesterday, we took that lift pump apart, completely cleaned it and rebuilt it, put it back on the engine. Of course, we had to get the engine running. We did the prime procedure and got it started. But that wasn't the test we wanted because it did start okay. But we decided to let the car sit overnight. It sat overnight, it's still quite cold this morning. We have not turned it over. Now I'm going to get in the car and start it. Cross our fingers and hope that this was the fix. Okay, we'll do a full glow. Oh, come on, baby, don't quit. I mean, literally every time you'd start this in the morning, it would just quit. Nice. You know, it's always really exciting when you fix a problem <laughs> the first time around. You know, a lot of times it could be the lift pump and something else, and you may have to keep working on it. But... I think we fixed this problem. It's going to take driving it a few days to make sure. But I want to take you over on the bench now and show you the old lift pump and show you some of the problems we ran into. And I think we found the problem. Because of the issues I was having with this engine running and the fact that it looks so bad when we removed it from the car, I decided to take it completely apart. I don't usually do this on every lift pump unless there's a reason for it. But I want to determine you know if there's a major problem here and if you look at the parts by the way it's really interesting the engineering how robust here's the piston you can see there's no scoring on the piston so that's probably not a problem as well as where the piston rides right down in here you know there's no diaphragm there's no part that can rip or tear here in this pump it's all metal parts the only plastic parts are the check valves themselves so we took a look at these check valves and I don't know if you can see that but this check valve surface is really beat up it's almost like it's had sand and gravel rubbing across it and it was the same with the other check valve now I've never seen check valves look this bad before obviously they were not seating you know the check valve goes down in here like this and with the spring, the spring holds it in place. And of course, as fuel flows, it opens the check valve and then it closes and opens and closes. So those weren't sealing properly. I see no other reason why this pump, you know, was not working properly. Earlier, I talked about the worms of disgust. He had a copper sealing washer, but he decided to goop a bunch of RTV along the threads of this primer pump. And of course, that excess went right down in here and probably got on these check valves. There was a lot of RTV, which was around this area and also down inside the injection pump itself. There it is, folks. <laughs> Another case against RTV silicone sealant. So we rebuilt the other pump. 
Uh, I didn't do this one. I took another one off the ejection pump and we're pretty happy with the results. I'm going to take you outside now and let you hear this run. The engine actually runs better, not only starts better, but runs better than it did before we replaced this pump. Since it's such a beautiful sunny day, I decided to bring the old wagon outside and let it run for a while. And I'm talking to my assistant and said, can you hear this? It actually sounds like the engine's running better a much softer note to the injectors and I'm going to start it up now and let you hear this because this engine's running way better than it did before we rebuilt the lift pump. <laughs> Listen to that. Now I'm just going to stand here for a little bit and let you listen to this engine. It it, it's amazing. Just bring it off idle here. And the other thing is, there's hardly any smoke. When I was running this in the shop, I was surprised that I didn't get that heavy exhaust diesel fume smell from just starting it up for a few seconds. So I've had it out here for about, you know, 30 minutes. Look at this cardboard. We're going to pull it out. We got one little teeny drip coming from that side over there but, uh, but that's a real good sign right there we did this job right and I think we fixed it I have to say that not every time you'll have this kind of problem and it's going to require you to rebuild a lift pump but if you're having these kind of issues with your diesel you know weak power stumbling at startup you might want to consider putting a kit in your lift pump Hopefully you'll get the same results that I did here.